Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Inkugaki and Ink Tsukumogami. And in this video today, I'm going to show you how to make your own VTuber model. We're going to check out how to set up your document, how to manage your layers, and also how to crop your VTuber so it can be animated on live 2D. All right, here we have our canvas information. In this case, I am using Procreate. Um, you can use any application or software you want. The only thing necessary is uh, that the software needs to be able to export on PSD files. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to export your character into Live 2D. Let's start with the width and the height of the canvas size, okay? So, uh, a lot of people like to use 8000 by 4000 pixel canvas sizes, or other people for smaller models use 4000 by 3000 pixels. Anything in between is actually really nice since you can add a lot of details. In my case, my model is 2300 by 3200 pixels. It's uh, on the smaller side, but it works fine. Next, we have the color profiles. Most of the programs in PC are going to have an sRGB color profile. This is great. The color profile is the way that um, your colors are going to communicate through applications. Let's say like that, okay? So that means that if you paint, for example, something in one application and you move it to another one, if they use the same or really similar color profiles, the colors are going to stay true to themselves. In my case, the iPad came with the Display P3 color profile. And if you're making your model an iPad, you gotta be careful. Since uh, the color profiles may, may change, you might not see any difference. And when you export your model on Live 2D, you might not see any difference either. But when you export the final product, chances are that your colors are going to be washed. So just to take that into account and be careful, you know? So now, let's get to the model. Hi guys, Inkogaki from the future here. Uh, sorry for the intrusion. <laughs> I forgot to tell you guys something really important. It's a concept that is super important when you're making a Live 2D model. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna explain it right now. Come on, follow me. All right, here we are. Uh, so the concept is related to empty spaces or voids in your model. So let's say you have a model like this one, right? And you decide to, you know, separate it in parts and you separate it like this. If you cut it like this, you're going to have some problems. Let's say you want to lift an arm or something like that. And you realize that the part of the arm that you did not draw, it's now going to be shown. And what happens? You get a void part, right? An empty space. The correct way of separating a character would be like this, where you know that, for example, some parts might show later, right? And you drew the extra piece of the part, even though you're not seeing it right now, okay? This helps you guys to avoid empty spaces or void parts and have a easier time when rigging. Let me give you an example here. Here we are back again with our VTuber model. Let's say we decide to move one arm. He wants to lift an arm. So when we lift the arm, when we rotate it, we're going to find out that something is missing. Part of the drawing is missing and it is missing because it was never drawn, okay? The way to avoid this is actually just drawing that part that is not visible at first sight. For example, uh, let's say I try to move this arm right here. This works much better because the arm was fully drawn. This idea, it's really important to take into account. When you are making hair, when you are doing a skirt, a shirt, okay? It's super, super important to always keep in mind that even though some parts are not completely visible, if you want them to move, you should draw them. Maybe not fully, but a good portion of it. Not only what is visible at first sight, okay? Let's go back into the video. Alright guys, here we have the model. I made this model a couple of days ago for these tutorials. So I'm going to show you now how I manage the layers. The first layer we have, it's a uh, flattened image of all the models. So I can have always a reference of how the model should look. Also, because of this. You guys can see that some parts are missing in the model, right? That's because uh, in the process of animation, if I animate an eye, for example, I, instead of doing it twice, I just animate one and I then duplicate it. The reference helps in this case because if I duplicate something, I know where it should be. So, well, you guys can see that I have different folders. I have the folder of the head, the folder of the body and the hair back. So here we have the hair. I separated the hair. Let me show you like this. I separated the hair in different pieces. The hair top, the hair front 
and the hair sides. Then I want to show you the eyes. First we have the eyebrows. Then we have the eyelash. The eyelash is separated in different parts, such as this little eyelash right here. Eyelash number two will be this other one, right? Then the eyelash base, or I just like to call it eyelash in general, will be this one. And then the eyelash side. I recommend doing these separated, the eyelash and then the eyelash side, because when transforming, it's easier to work with this piece if it's separated like this, okay? So if you have a character model that has this kind of eyes where, you know, the eyelash goes down to the side, uh, I would recommend to separate it. Uh, then I have the bottom eyelash. I'm sure I call it like that. Uh, <laughs> it's just a little line that will give us a little bit more of shape to the eye, okay? And then I, I call this little line here eye squish. Let me turn on the face here so you guys can see. The eye squish will be this little line right here, yes? Sorry if my model is lagging a little bit. Computer Sun is, is trying its best. <laughs> uh, this little line I, right here, I call it eye squish. It's basically just a line that it's going to help us define a little bit the volume of the eye when open and closing, okay? Then we have the iris. The iris is actually rather simple in this case uh, because I made it all in a single layer, as you guys can see. If you guys have seen other VTuber models that they have really wobbly and crazy eyes, it's because sometimes the reflections uh, such as this little circle right here, they are separated. And of course, if you have more items separated and you start animating them, uh, you can make a little bit more of a dynamic eye. Here we have the eyeshadow. The eyeshadow is this little gray part right here. I'm going to unclip it so you guys can see it clearly. There we go. If you have clip parts on your model, do not worry. When you upload the model into Live2D, those parts are going to unclip. But you can reclip them there because Live2D have a clipping feature. And at last, we have the sclera that is basically just the white part of the eye. Next, we have the face. In the face, we have the nose. Uh, that is basically just this white dot here. It's going to help us defining uh, a little bit of volume and this little line right here, okay? Next, we have the mouth. The mouth is also one of those parts that needs to be separated in different pieces. For example, the upper lip, the lower lip, then I will hide the face for a second. Then we have the teeth and the tongue. And at last, we have the full circle of the mouth where we're going to clip the teeth and the tongue. All right, let's continue with the face. The face has a face base and also it has an ear because this ear we are going to duplicate it on Life 2D later. Now, let's take a look um, how I separated the body. I separated the body like this. First, the chest. This is gonna be separated from the body so we can actually animate it and make it easier and also give a better illusion of perspective. Then we have the main body. Then we have the legs. Since this is a simple character, I made the legs in a single layer because I won't be animating knees or anything like that. And then we have an arm that we're going to duplicate, the belly, and the hands. That is only one as well, but we're going to duplicate it with the arm when uh, we animate it. To finish, we have the hair. The hair in the back looks like this. It's actually separated in two pieces. This first piece, and the back piece. It's separated like this so it can give us a little bit more of a whoosh effect and also more control when animating, okay? And that will be how to separate a character for Life 2D. Well guys, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can hit the like button, subscribe and turn on the notifications if you want. I'll be uploading much more videos like this. We're going to go through the whole process on how to rig the VTuber model that you just saw on Live 2D. So, you know, stay tuned. Until then, bye bye guys. Have a nice day.